today's scripture comes from Romans 8, verses 12 to 17, and it says, Therefore, brethren, we are debaters, not the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, you, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If needed, we suffer with him, that we may also be glorif glorified together. And that's the word of today. Let's pray. God, I want to take this opportunity to pray, pray for Pastor Ishmael as he is about to give us your word. Help us understand what you're trying to tell us through him. And let us have a good ser service this morning. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, church. It's another good morning and good Sunday that we are here this morning to give thanks to the Lord. Last Sunday, but one, we were talking about of the disciples waiting for the Holy Spirit. The promise that they were promised to be in Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit. And last Sunday, we were talking about the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit coming down, and they received the Holy Spirit, and now the church starting to be the church, and today we are looking unto life in the Spirit. When we think of the Holy Spirit, and we think of how the Holy Spirit works, you will find that the Holy Spirit, even Jesus himself, when he got full of the Holy Spirit, he had to wait until he was 30 years. Until the day that he was baptized and the Holy Spirit came down and the voice of God witnessed that this is my son. When he was full of Holy Spirit, that is when he went and he was, was tempted. So today, Paul is talking about the Christians and talking about the people when you are full of the Holy Spirit. He is speaking of uh, people who are Holy Spirit. That those led by the Holy Spirit are children of God. The Holy Spirit, everybody knew that Jesus was the Son of God. And they believed that. But they, when he was baptized, the Holy Spirit came down and witnessed, this is my lovely Son, to whom I am priest. Until, and until when one is full of the Holy Spirit, that is when you start pleasing God. That is when God witnesses that you are his son, his daughter, in faith. The Bible tells us about the Holy, Holy, Holy Spirit. And today I wanted to remind us that those who are led by the Spirit, because they are children of God, they obey the commandment. When the commandment says, Whatever the commandment of God says, those who are of the Holy Spirit or those who are led by the Holy Spirit will believe it and obey and not only obey but do according to the, what the Bible says. They always walk in the ways of their Father. Jesus, I mean God, 
is saying, Hear my people. Please, those who are called by my name, if they turn back and repent of their sins, then their high will be with them. If you are in of the Holy Spirit, you listen to that voice and come and repent and listen to the voice of God. You will be listening to God. You will be depending on the wisdom of God and not your own wisdom. A Holy Spirit filled person will always think about the heavenly kingdom. Will think always about his or our father in heaven. When you are Holy Spirit filled, you always like and desire to please God and not human beings. You will always be thinking about, you will be concerned with what God is saying and seeing you. How God is seeing you and how God is, what God is saying about you will be your concern. You will always be ready to praise him and to reason and to do according to what the Bible or the voice is saying to you. As believers, we have a relationship with God. And not just a relationship, but an intimate relationship. And the Holy Spirit will always be guiding you and reminding you that, A, God loves you. That, A, you need to repent. This way that you are going is not the right way. The Holy Spirit will be always reminding you to seek peace, to seek fellowship with other people and also with God. When you are in a relationship with God, you will know his voice. Jesus says, they know my voice and I know them by names. Jesus will know you by your name. You will listen to his voice and you will do according to the voice of God. When you have the Holy Spirit, the voice that you listen to, you will always be in a position to listen and do according to his voice. In today's life, people like to pay evil with evil. We are Christians. Even the war that is in this world, different corners of the world. As Christians, we should provide good things in the sight of all people. It is only by the Holy Spirit. It is only by the Holy Spirit that you will know that to pay evil with evil is evil. If you are good Christians and you are you have the Holy Spirit, He will tell you evil is paid with good and evil is overcome by good and not by doing evil to other people. I don't know how many times as Christians we even care how we speak. I don't know how many times as Christians when you speak or when you alter whatever you alter, you do ask yourself, what is the impact of what I'm about to say? Or what is the impact of what I'm saying? 
Many a times is when we are overrided by our own knowledge and we, we think that we are better than everybody else. But the Bible says when you know God and God is in you, you will always be seeing others better than you. It is good. As Christians, to be mindful of how we talk, of what we say, and even being mindful of how people will take or interpret whatever you are saying. Many a times is when we forget. In verses 8, 17, verse 18 says to live in peace with all people if possible. It is true that you need to be in peace with everyone. Live in peace with all people. All people does not mean only your wife. Does not mean your children. Does not only mean the people in this community. But all the people. Irrespective of their education level. Irrespective of their color. Irrespective of who they are in this community. You need to have peace with them. And this does not mean that peace at any cost, but peace when others do not make it impossible. Even when people are trying to make it difficult for you to have peace with everyone, you have to try your level best and make peace with our people. Christians should not be the cause of trouble. We should be peacemakers. We are always filled so that we be peacemakers and not to cause trouble. But many a times is when you find that, well, who is a Christian? One may ask himself or self, who is a Christian? You are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are Christian. You believe in the words of God. You believe in the word of God. You believe in what Jesus taught. You are Christian. But if you look at this world, right now we have seen people being in war for almost six months now. These are Christians. Instead of seeking peace, instead of looking for ways to end this war, they are feeling it. They are feeling it day in, day out. As a Christian, when two people have a difference, how do you handle that? Or you say, hey, I know between Laja and Ishmael, Ishmael is better than Raja. I don't think Ishmael is the cause of the problem. It's Raja. Or you say it's not Raja, it's mercy. No. As Christians, we have to reason. We have to reason how. And our ultimate goal is not to fight who is better than the other one, but to see where God is working between the three or the two or the two people between the two countries. Christians should let peace of Christ rule in their hearts. Many a times is when we forget that Jesus is peaceful, that he came for us to have peace. Even Christians themselves sometimes we lack peace. We think and see whatever is happening and you see the problem and the challenges that are there being bigger than Jesus himself. And you lack peace. You lose peace in your heart. Brethren, 
I want to remind you that today, the Holy Spirit came not for anything else, but to appease us, to give us peace. Even when things are going south or west, still the Lord is there for us. Still the peace of God should prevail. Even when people are saying, talking about you, nothing good about you, you should always listen to the voice of God and ask God and listen to, to what the, the Spirit is saying. That, hey, you are wonderfully created. Hey, you are my son. You are my daughter. I love you. This is what you should be listening to. Sometimes, it could be your wife, could be your husband, could be your children. And I want to remind you, brothers and sisters, that even when there is not that peace, as a Christian, you should always stand and let other faithfuls see that you are still standing and you are still proclaiming the love of God. Even when they are everybody thinks that you are the worst of all. Some people are unable even to ask Christians, they are unable to make up their own peace. And they feel that, hey, I am lacking peace because of so and so. They start blaming others. They start claiming and saying and even talking, saying about why they don't have that peace. And they blame other people. Do not blame other people. Be a Christian. Face these challenges courageously. Let you not be unstubborn or peace to others because you don't have peace. Paul says, when I am weak, I look strong. What does that mean as a Christian? Remember that the Holy Spirit came to cancel you. The Holy Spirit came so that we have peace. And Jesus himself told the, the, the disciples, Peace be with you. And today, the peace that the Lord said that we have is what we need to proclaim. Christians should stand up for truth, but be patient and helpful in other matters. They should be willing to make small concessions when needed. We as Christians we stand up for truth. Don't say something to priest Ishmael or to priest Mercy or to priest Amanda, but say what you want to say, but say in a way that uh, this person will continue to love God, will continue to preach the good news. This morning, I want to remind us, brothers and sisters, that there will be always be disagreements, whether between spouses, between children and parents, members of the church. But disagreements should not become personal matters. Christians should contend for truth, not themselves. Say the truth. Don't just say something because you want to say, but say something because you are looking for peace. Because you want the truth to be known. Christians should let the peace of Christ through in their hearts. 
This means a lot. They should not deserve the peace even when facing difficulties. Christians do face difficulties and they make it difficult for others. Don't make life difficult for others because you are facing challenges. It is good to realize and to remember that the peace that Jesus said we have when we receive the Holy Spirit is more than the challenges that you are facing. Having filled with the Holy Spirit, it gives us an opportunity as a church, it gives you an opportunity as a Christian to preach and to continue sharing the goodness of Christ. Until when they were Holy Spirit filled, the church was dry. But when the Holy Spirit came down and they received the Holy Spirit, they walked out in fire and preached the good gospel, good news of Jesus Christ. And the church grew. They did not went out there talking about themselves and about other people. They did not talk about the community. They were talking about the goodness of Christ. And speaking about goodness of Christ, many a times is when I do tell you that you don't have to be in the pulpit. You don't have to be a preacher like me to preach the good, uh, the, the good news. You can still preach good news in your uh, actions. People look at you and see the way you act and the way you talk and the way you reason and they say and ask themselves, are you a Christian? And you tell them yes. And they start desiring or they start anything, you are like. I would like to be like Dave because he argues this day one, two, three. I would like to be like Ishmael because one, two, three, four. You don't have to be speaking about it, even doing it the way you act. When the church is full of the Holy Spirit, the church will continue to show love to the community and to the people around her. If we are spirit filled, we don't we will not need to go and call people to come to the church, but they will be desiring to be with us because of the love that they see within us. The peace of Christ should act as an empire, helping Christians determine how to respond to situations. How do you respond to situations? When you are faced with this challenge, how do you react? How you react tells me or you or others that this is purely the Holy Spirit speaking. Paul is saying, we are now debtant to fresh. We are now living in the Holy Spirit. You know, the fresh is whereby this person is seeing himself better than anyone else. Is when you are there and passing judgment about other people. It's you knows who is good way and who is right, who is wrong. It's you who will tell who have wisdom or not. It's you who is judging other people by all means. This is the fresh. When you are read by the fresh, you will already be thinking about you and yourself. It is about you and not others. 
But when you are Holy Spirit filled, you will think about others. You will think about other people testing the goodness of God. You will not be thinking about you. Only you and you alone. When you are Holy Spirit filled, you will not only pray for your family. You will not only pray for yourself. You will also pray for others. You also pray for the church. You pray for the neighbors. You pray for the community. You pray for everybody. Because it's no longer about you. But about Jesus Christ. It's about the love of God. When you are Holy Spirit filled. You will not only think about others. But also you will be concerned with what they are going through. I want to remind you that praying for someone when he or she has a, a challenge is a good thing. Visiting that person and staying with that person for two minutes, listening to our him is another thing. When you are Holy Spirit filled, you not only pray for me, you also visit with me and ask me, Ishmael, ah, how are things going? You will not only talk about Ishmael in public. Whatever you say about Ishmael in public, let it also be said in private. Christians, should not have double standards. If you are always spirit filled, you will hug someone, you give him a hug or her a hug and say, God bless you. And that will be from your heart. But not to say, God bless you now. And outside in the church, you are saying something else. Paul is saying, we are no longer in debt of the flesh. It is only people who are not spirit filled who can do that. If I, I tell my friend Bill today, Bill, I love you and I like the way you do things. My brother, if, even if I go out there, I should say the same thing. But most of the times is when you have Christians who have double standards, they are saying one thing here and one thing out there. May the Lord God help us and continue to give us this wisdom and the life of the Holy Spirit so that we will be able to share the love of God with other people, with the world. We are called as a church not only to be a church in Lake Hen, but also to be the witness of Jesus Christ. We cannot witness or continue to witness about Jesus Christ if we are not respecting the commandment of God. What the word of God says is wrong is wrong. And what the Bible says is evil is evil. What the, the Bible says is holy is holy. What the Bible says is good is good. And that is it. We are the church full of the Holy Spirit. We are called by God and the Holy Spirit came down so that we continue to worship the Lord. So that we continue to witness about Jesus Christ. We are called to be witnesses. Amen. Amen. We are called to be witnesses. We are called to be the example, the love. It is only through us as a church that the Lord will be glorified. That everybody will know that Christ liveth. As I conclude, 
we are all human beings and god knew and even jesus knew that we will not make it without the holy spirit it is only through the holy spirit that we will make it it is only by you listening to the holy spirit my brother and my sister that you will make it and i will make it as a pastor if i only listen to the holy spirit not that there will be no other voices coming. There will be other voices coming here and there. But which voice do you listen to? Which command do you are there to? Are you hearing the voice that is telling you you are failure? Or you are hearing the voice that is telling you I have good plans for you. Prosperity for prosperity. I have called you to serve me. Are you going to to listen to the voices that are saying negative things about you, about your life, about your children, about your grandchildren? Are you going to listen to the voices of the devil when he comes and tells you you will die of your sickness? Your son will die, your daughter will die. Are you listening to all those voices or you want to listen? May you be in the spirit so that you will be able to listen to the voice that is telling you, I am the healer. I will heal you. I will be with you now and forever. Through these challenges, I will be with you. When God called Joshua, he told him, I will be with you. He knew, of course, this calling was not to be easy. He knew people will not even listen to him. At one point, they will even turn against him. But what the promise is, I will be with you to the end of the world. My brother and my sister, the sickness that is in your household, the members in your family who are sick and losing members of your family is not the end of the world. God promised I will be with you until the end of the world. It is not easy. It's going to not be easy at all. Does not mean because we are spirit filled now, that is it. No. When we are Holy Spirit filled, that is when the devil will come to give us temptations and trials. Where are we? May the God of our forefathers come. May he give us strength like he did to our forefathers in faith. May God give us strength to overcome evil. May he give us strength to see others better than ourselves. To praise him, to worship him in truth and in spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.